Mishpacha, it's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother, and I am back with a Friday Reads video. So, uh, it is October 15th today, and thus far this month, I've only finished two books. So, um, the first book that I finished, and I actually finished this um, before this past week, but I did do a Friday Reads video last week, so I'm going to catch you up. Um, but the first book I finished was a collection of short stories called Alligator and Other Stories by Dima Alzayat. And I actually started this in September as part of my own personal Arab American literature project where every month I read one book written by an Arab American writer. Um, and this short story collection was fine. I ended up giving it three stars, I think. I think that's right. Um, I... I liked some of the stories more than others, which is the case with a lot of short story collections for me. Um, the title story, Alligator, I found interesting because it uses this mixed media format um, where there are newspaper clippings and transcripts of court reports uh, interwoven with actual narrative threads from different perspectives. Um, so that was interesting, although I did find all of those from different perspectives hard to keep track of. Um, and another story in there that I really liked, I don't remember the title of now, but it was this story about two, uh, young brothers, and one of the brothers is mentally disabled, um, and goes missing at some point in the story, and I really liked that story because I felt like it did a good job at capturing a sibling relationship. Um, and especially the mindset of children when tragic or terrible or um, unusual events occur. So I, I, I quite liked that one. That was my favorite in the collection. But the other ones were just kind of fun, meh, whatever. Nothing to write home about. Um, and I also found that I wanted sort of more narrative cohesion throughout the collection. Like a lot of times in short story collections, the stories will all kind of be related to the same theme or topic. Um, for example, Disha Filia's The Secret Lives of Church Ladies, right? Like the stories are all about different characters, but all of the women have some connection to religion in some way, or Hodgins' uh, short story collection The Bridegroom, all of those stories take place in the same uh, location, which is Harbin in China, um, and they all kind of examine communism in China. So I just, I wanted to have more cohesion thematically um, for the stories too. But it was fine. If you like short story collections, go ahead and try it. You might like it. Again, I found the mixed media format of Alligator interesting. So three stars. Um, the other book I finished this month, which I finished um, this past week, was Shall Cross by C.D. Wright. This is a collection of poetry, and this was, C.D. Wright was recommended to me by my former dissertation director, who anytime she has a poetry recommendation for me, I am here for it. Um, also, this book is beautiful. I mean, it's a, it's a naked hardback. So I just love the way that it's designed, and I got this from my school library, and I think I'm the first person to ever have taken it out, because when I was reading it, it still has that, like, new book smell. <laughs> oh, and then the inside um, is quite pretty, too. It has a picture of the author um, in, uh, I'm not sure, oh, she was in Chile, um, and then a, a blurb about her on the set. So yeah, it's just a really... It's a really pretty book, and then it, it has um, some praise for her on the, the back part. So yeah, I just think it's a beautiful book um, as an object. So as a poetry collection, I was very confused by this. <laughs> Reading this was like a fever dream, and I had no idea what was going on half or more of the time. However, I actually quite liked it. <laughs> um, for some reason, I don't necessarily mind confusion in poetry, especially if the confusion is also accompanied by beautiful turns of phrases and language. Um, and this definitely has that, and I appreciated that about it. Um, and this also has some poems uh, that are presented in interesting formats. So, for example, there are two places in the collection where um, 
you have to pull you have to pull the page out because it's actually written uh, or it's it's put in sort of sideways as you can tell um, and then I have to be careful about putting you know bending it back correctly and, and putting it back right but um, but otherwise um, most of the poems are presented um, you know they're, they're printed normally and not sideways <laughs> Um, but they, they do all have different formats, which I appreciated about this. Um, they all address different topics, and I had a lot of feelings while I was reading this, which I also appreciated about it, so I was sometimes disturbed, um, I was sometimes reflective, I was sometimes very moved by the beauty of the language here. So. Just for an example, um, this is from the title poem of the collection, Shall Cross. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's too long, but here is a section that I particularly liked. Now who will make the record of us? Who will be the author of our blind and bilious hours, of the silken ear of our years? Who will distinguish our dandruff from the rest among the gusts of history? Who will turn our maudlin concerns into moments of incandescence? So yeah, I just think that's, that's it's beautiful. <laughs> so um, yeah, if that at all sounds appealing to you, I would recommend this collection. I ended up giving it four stars. Um, and I would definitely read something else by C.D. Wright because this was weird and it was like a fever dream, but I, I loved it. So yeah, I would definitely read something else by her. Um, so I would recommend this if you like poetry, especially if you like the aesthetic elements of poetry and or experimentation in, in your poetry. So yeah, four stars. Um, so that's everything I've read so far. So on to the currently reading list. So I am 30, pa 30 pages away from being done with Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. I am doing this as a buddy read with Sam at Paper Not Books. Um, and I didn't, I didn't want to go ahead and finish it before I filmed this video because I still have to do my final check-in with Sam, so I will probably finish this tonight and, uh, send Sam my thoughts and then, um, I will give you a sort of review of it next week. Um, but this is, uh, a satire. It's been kind of comical. I've also found it at times sort of tedious, um, because everyone in this book is quirky and weird and I feel like when everyone is quirky and weird no one is quirky and weird <laughs> so um but but I but it has been an interesting read and it's the first Vonnegut I've ever read and I am glad that I read it um but more thoughts about it when I wrap it up next week so again I will probably finish this tonight um I'm also currently listening to an audiobook Winter Counts by David Heska Wandley Wyden and I am a little bit over halfway done with this, and I have to finish that up in the next few days because it's it's I have it out from the library and it's due back in the next few days. So, um, so I will for sure finish that up by the time I do my next Friday Reads video. Um, and that's one that I think a lot of people on BookTube have already read, but it's about a man named Virgil Wounded Horse um, who kind of has this, this job of administering vigilant, vigilante justice uh, on the res. Um, when people feel like they, they can't get justice through the legal system, they, they go to him and he goes and beats people up and stuff. Um, so his nephew gets involved in some crazy drug stuff and then um, Virgil sort of goes off to try to figure out who's been bringing drugs onto the reservation and trying to help his nephew um, avoid these drug charges um, and things like that. So it's interesting um, and again I will probably finish it by next week and I will have more thoughts. Um, also currently buddy reading A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens with Cynthia of Book Whimsy and I am a little bit over a quarter of the way into this. I definitely need to catch up. So, um, so I'm not quite sure what to make of this so far because a bunch of people have been introduced and I, I kind of still feel like I'm finding my footing and um, figuring out exactly what's going on, but I'm glad to be buddy reading this with Cynthia. Um, and then the last book that I'm currently buddy reading is Aus Austerlitz by W.G. Sebald, which I'm doing as a buddy read with 
Brian at Bookish, Mark Nash, and Cena from Being Around the Books. Um, so we've done one check-in on this so far, uh, and we have our second check-in tomorrow. Um, I quite like this so far. I'm finding it very captivating reading, and for our first check-in, I actually read the whole section in one go, and imagine I'm going to do that with our second section um, for tomorrow's check-in. Um, so by the time I send my message tomorrow, we'll be halfway done with this. Um, so yeah, more, more thoughts on this later, but this is also going well. And then, last but not least, of course, I'm still reading The Essential Writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson, and I am uh, maybe a little over 200 pages from the end of this book. Uh, let's see. I'm on 642, and this book has... 847 pages. So yes, I am 205 pages from the end of this book. Um, so I think if I kind of keep up, I can finish this in November, which I'm very excited about. So that is everything that I either finished recently or I'm currently reading. If you have thoughts about any of these books, I would love to hear that. Please let me know down in the comments below. Um, thank you for watching this. I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until next time, would it kill you to call your mother?